Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, folks, welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. I'm Alan Arkin, and that is Marty McFly, and we're both. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hungover, pushing through. It's been a wild week. Careful, you got a pair of panties coming out of your doctor's oh, coat there. Hold on. <laughs> Ooh, those are my aunts. There oh, we are. Oh, boy. A lab coat really goes a long way. You put a lab coat on a guy, and you'll believe anything they say. Is that a lab coat? No, you said doctor's coat. It made me think of it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, my God. They are they're they just look like they run the joint. It's a weird thing about a lab coat, though. It's like, so there's no real doctor uniform other than the coat? What, like, what is the scrub? coat? Scrub. You got a scrub. No, that's a nurse or a surgeon. But, like, a, a doctor comes in, he's wearing slacks and a, and a tie. That's just true. a dumb, like, a coat. He, he's got the same coat as the, the photograph guy at Walmart. Yeah, and the butcher. And the butcher. What's going on? And the butler. What's the candlestick maker working over there? Mm, I this, think they're in the back scaring kids. <laughs> They got welding to do and metal. I picture it like a uh, ghost. Oh, my love. The, oh, the uh, potpourri. That's pottery. Yeah. Whoopi Goldberg? Ugh, no, it's Demi. Uh, <laughs> Demi. <laughs> yeah, we're not hating the Jews here. Demi. Yeah, it's not about race. Appropriation. Yes. Took the name Goldberg. I know, which is already a wrestler. And then, there, we think we might, do we talk about this? That's a little old news. They're literally like, they're like, hey, are you Jewish? And she's like, would you ask me that if I was white? But you're like, but you're not Jewish. Yeah, I know. It's a That's nice insane. Twist. It's like when Kevin Spacey, like, purple nurpled a 14-year-old. He's like, I'm gay. <laughs> like, yeah, we know, but you touched a kid. <laughs> It's like, uh, which shows you how what he thinks of gays, by the way. Ah, yeah, they're touchy. He's like, that's the explanation of my criminal hood. Right, right. I'm gay. You know how these gays are. They're criminals. I, I tried that as a comic where I'd say an offensive joke. I'm like, I'm autistic. That was my move. Right. That, that uh, Autism went way up. Me and Shelby were talking about Down syndrome has gone downs, mm -hmm. and autism went up. Well, autism, I don't buy it. I mean, there's people that are like, oh, I'm on the spectrum. It's all spectrum. And someone has a joke about it. I forget whose joke it is. Well, it's like, it's well, everyone's on Ruby. a spectrum. Matt it's Ruby. A spectrum. Yeah. Yes, that's Ruby. Yeah, because I, I know a couple people in my life. I don't want to name names or point fingers, but they're like, yeah, I'm autistic. And I'm like, how so? What do you mean? Right. What's and, the evidence? And I got a friend. He's got a brother-in-law who is like autistic. Like, Autistic classic. Oh, really? Where when he meets you, he asks you when you were born, and he says the day of the week. Oh, you were wow. born in 1983. He knows all the days. He's like Rain Man. Yes, exactly. And you know, he'll be like, you know, masturbating at McDonald's or something because he doesn't know social whatever. Yeah. And then I'm with a person hanging out for six hours, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, I'm autistic." Yes. And I'm like, "What? No." If you can't yeah. spot it, you don't got it. Right. That's what I say. I like it. Yeah, autism. I want to drop some matchsticks and get a count. Yeah, exactly. 82, you know? 82, 82, 246 total. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're awkward. Oh, we're all awkward. Welcome yeah. to the club. We're dealing I'm, with comedians quiet. here. Shelby, you autistic? You're saying he's saying no. Well, that one I don't no. buy. Yeah. I think <laughs> You've definitely jerked it out of McDonald's in the ball <laughs> pit. Come on. I think you're incorrect about that. Oh, yeah. But anyways, maybe he just hates us. I think that's a lot of things. People are like, that guy, I think that guy's autistic. Right. I'm like, maybe he doesn't like you. Yeah, exactly. Not he's, everyone he's likes each other. Trying to get away from you. Wait, I had a thing. Uh, Asperger's. What's that one? Is that different? Asperger's is different, but I think it's all pipes, pipes. now. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's all, if you blink a couple times. Right. Simonson has that great joke. About, What's his joke? His joke is about the woman. He meets the woman being like, I think you're autistic. And he's like, she knew me five minutes. She just took a stab. No doctor. I, I can't do the joke. He ah, does it so well. You he's know? got the delivery, yeah. Yeah, but. Uh, well, I, you know what's good about obesity? That's apparently a disease. <clears throat> Which is a weird thing to say it's a disease. Like when they say alcoholism is a disease. You know, it's like that Norm joke. It's like, well, it's a great disease. I get drunk and meet a girl and fuck her. I don't. Do they say 
uh, obesity is a disease? I think it's a disease. I don't know about that. Well, everything's a disease now, but... Uh, disease and sorry. I like what I like about obesity. It's the only disease that I can spot. If somebody's got cancer, mm. you, I mean, unless they got the shaved head, but the first day of cancer, they look normal. I don't know. AIDS. I'm spotting AIDS all over. You got the yellow skin, the skinny. Shelby's got it. Magic Johnson is <laughs> clean as a whistle. I'd blow him. <laughs> That's HIV. HIV's oh, different. Oh, what's the difference? HIV is hard to spot. AIDS is... <laughs> <laughs> Down. Is it like Coke and Pepsi? If you cut yourself bleeding, you bleed out. Oh. You know, ribs. Coke and Pepsi. No, it's like it's Coke and, and orange Kool-Aid? juice or ah, something. I, I don't see. know. Grapefruit juice. Whatever sucks. Apples and oranges. AIDS is bad. Okay. AIDS is bad. I've heard that, but I'm just saying. Johnson, uh, Charlie Sheen, you got AIDS now. You're cruising. Yes. HIV. These are Sorry. different. They're different. It's like saying cancer and COVID. No. Yes, that's the difference. That's a different ballpark. This is two. A- they, both of these are a little aidsy. They're, HIV and uh, AIDS. Well, they're married, but so are uh, you know Camille and Bill aren't living the same kind of mm-hmm. lifestyles. That's true. You know, that's true. I don't know if any of this makes sense. <laughs> is that the Cosby wife? Cosby, my Camille. wife Camille. Camille, oh, you put the pudding in the pop. I loved Cosby. I watched the video, the the movie, the W. Camille Bell made the the, the video sure. there, the movie. And there's some some interesting stuff. I don't know why I just had autism for a second. I couldn't say interesting. Mm. But there's some good stuff in there. But it just made you like, yeah, Cosby's the greatest. This, the part of the, the movie, I'm watching it being like, oh, wow, he's a terrible rapist, but quite the entertainer. Well, he was America's daddy, the number one sitcom of all time. He was the best comedian for like two, three decades. Yeah. Everybody loved him. Uh, Seinfeld and all the black comics looked up to him. Change the game. I'm sure we talked about this. Let's just dabble in it. We Uh-oh. did it once before on a bonus. Give me your Rushmore. Four faces no, only comedy. I hate the Rushmore. Hit me a Rushmore. I like a five. I'm like, what about a Rushmore with a fifth? Because I got five guys. Five Burgers is good. And fries. Good burger. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Well, everybody's different because it hits you. you well, that's know, why I'm saying yours. It's I'm not yours. saying give me, give me uh, you know, Stephen Hawking's well, Rushmore. Give me yours. Well, we do. He can't get up there. <laughs> but we do all the goats. Oh, he's the goat. He's the goat. There's too much goat because you can't be calling everybody the goat. Goat's a new buzzword. Hey, People goat. just learn it. They all use it. Yep. And uh, it's just ridiculous. Well, it's it, a subjective uh, art form. I get if you're like Jordan's the goat. Sure. That, that I'll allow. But, uh, oh, oh, I'll tell you, Andrew Schultz is the goat. You're like, well, all right, we got 800 comics here. Well, it's like everything. Words just lose meaning. People yes. throw words around like autism, and then Racist. all of a sudden it doesn't mean anything. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Racism. You're like, what? Well, uh, racism. I thought that was like... Spit on a guy's face because yes. his skin color. Don't come around here. Now it's like, you know, you shook hands for too short a period right. of time or whatever. <laughs> right. You fist yeah. bumped a guy and you're exactly. like, whoa, they didn't, whatever. Yeah, in the 90s when you're like, that guy's racist, you're like, holy shit, is that right? Now you're like, he's racist. You're like, Let me read the article. Yeah, it's a little, uh, yeah, that's that's one. And I'm like, because now we have this, I mean, now we're off on a different topic, but like we have the same word for people that are like, get out of here, N-words, right. you're not allowed. That's the same word right. for a guy Who's like best man is white? Yes. <laughs> like, yes. I don't, uh, why are we conflating these? things? I know. I'm in family photos now with all my white relatives, and I'm like, we're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> You're a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but it's true. It's true. We throw the word. We go all the way to the top. It's like, uh, hey, this guy's a Nazi, and you're like, well, he's a Jew, and they go, ah, right. They're like, well, we have to have some meaning here. Yes. And then it's weird. Like nobody called Whoopi a Nazi, did they? I'm like, that's more Nazi-ish than Ari. Hmm. Ari's been called a Nazi, but he's clearly looks like Jewish propaganda. Yeah, he's yeah, hideous. he's not a Nazi. No, he's he's not a lot of things. No, but he stinks. But um, yeah, all right. So give me the rush. All right. Well, everybody's different. Uh, mine is uh, stop prefacing. Okay, give me your opinion. Your opinion matters. Oh, thank you. Um, BLM. <laughs> uh, Groucho Marx, George Carlin. We're oh, talking stand up here. Oh, okay. Stand up because I got Bill Murray on there too. Oh, I'm oh, eating over here. We're doing comedy. No, stand up comedy. This is what happens there. I'm stand trying to have my rush more. Stand up comedy. Okay, we'll go stand up. Yeah, stand up. What are we, assholes? What are you putting uh, fucking Tina Fey in there? I and, like uh, Tina. Rushmore. All right. George Carlin, 90s Chris Rock. <laughs> <laughs> um. Seinfeld, 
Just for the the influence. Uh-huh. Norm McDonald. That's four. You're out. Oh, I'm out? You hit the wall. All right. Rush all right. Well, four. there you go. There's my rush. All right. I'm going Johnny Carson, Bob Hope. Wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what are we doing here? It's a bit. All right. It's a bit. Who's, and, who's uh, you know, Will Ferrell. Tim and Dillon. Then, uh, <laughs> all right. I got mine's tricky because I want the fifth. Can't we just add a fifth? Give me a five, too. You take a five. Give me a fifth uh, of whiskey. I'll probably say Bill Burr. Bill Burr? Over Louis? Ah, yeah, Louis up there. Over uh, Louis? Over, uh, yeah, I mean, well, this is going to be the whole episode. Yeah, yeah, no, Louis, uh, Louis the goat. Um, <laughs> let's see, it's tough. It's very tough. Yeah, Louis and Burr. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Louis tough more area. thoughtful. But Burr will really attack a subject. He's got it. I mean, Louis has so much, too. But here's what's great about Burr. I feel like pound for pound, Louis's probably a better writer and comedian. This is all, I feel horrible saying all this. But Bill Burr, you put him on a, a podcast, he kills it. I don't know about Louis killing it on a podcast. But we're talking stand-up here. Okay, we're George Carlin stand-up. never got to do a podcast. That's true. And he, no he, pod. He did the couch a few times, and it wasn't pretty. No, no he's not a pretty guy. No. Comedy isn't pretty. Steve Martin. Uh-huh. Not on the rush board. All right, I'll go Lou. What's that you said? Mm-hmm. I'll go Lou. My, I got, I got the three blacks: Cosby, Pryor, Rock. No, wait. Chappelle, Cosby, Pryor, Kevin Hart, Cat Williams. Oh shit! Maybe there's only Wanda two. Wanda Sykes. There's only two blacks. Uh, Mike Epps. Oh wait, when I thought three, I thought like those Earthquake. big three from the. <laughs> Bruce Bruce. Earthquake will kill Mount Rushmore. It'll fall apart. That's true. Good point. He's underrated, by the way. Earthquake? Killer. The wrestler? Killer comic. No, no. The the black comedian. I got to check him out. I don't know any oh, Earthquake. No he's Earthquake. Got great stuff. Good writing. Good takes. He, uh, Chappelle just got him a special. He's producing it. I'll check it out. I'll be sure to see it. Well uh, overdue. Oh, you know who's great as uh, Bernie Mac is hilarious, too. Bernie Mac, sure, but I mean, we're talking rush Not a rush. Here. Just throwing it out there. Uh, what are you, honorable mensch? But the big the big three, to me, are those those three origin guys, to me, which Cosby never gets put on the list, to me. Cosby, well, Pryor, Carlin. Even sure. before. Nobody respected. I've gotten, I mean, you were there. We've gotten, like, fist fights with people about Cosby being, like, number one. No one ever says number one. They say Pryor or Carlin. Everyone right. throws out Pryor or Carlin. Prior, early prior, he was doing, doing Cosby. Cosby. That's true, yeah. And Cosby uh, remained, I mean, like, himself is amazing, 49's amazing, those old albums are amazing. Sure. He had a new special, but we never got to see, which sucks. Oh, yeah. Comedy Central thing. The yeah. Candid. Sure. It's a sleeper. But anyways, I got those three and Woody. No love for Woody. Woody's love Woody. so influential. His, he's the only guy from the 60s whose stand-up really holds up. Still evergreen. And if I'm adding a fifth, it's got to be Louis, I guess. Sure. But if you're only four... I'm like, maybe I get rid of Cosby. Maybe it's Carlin, Pryor, Woody, Louie. But then I only got one black, and it's, it does feel misrepresented and because got... of how good these guys are. And then, by the way, Patrice oh, is right up in there. I love Another Patrice. underrated. No ladies, by the way. We should throw in a gal here. No, I mean, I'm sorry, and it's not. It's because of society. They, the women, they just didn't get to flourish until sure, much sure. later. I mean, this... Same with Asians, same with uh, gay yeah, I guess it just wasn't. Um, I don't. I don't know what happened there, but there is no. Feel, I feel bad saying it because I love women and women are great, whatever. But there's just no woman that's worthy of those top five spots. Mm. I mean, who do you even say? Right. A lot of people say Ellen, but you're like, what does she have? She had two, one two great good special, specials, two great two good specials. specials, and then they got Joan, who's revolutionary, and she had balls, and she went, she pushed it, and she was doing stand up till the day she fucking died in Vegas. Yeah. So I like that. So Joan's gonna be up there, but still, she's not cracking Cosby, Pryor, Carlin, Woody, or Louie to me. Sure. Well, Joan. Hilarious, funny jokes, uh, edgy, fun stuff. But she was like, you never go, oh, my God, that bit blew my mind with Joan. Yeah, I you can't know, really with, think of with one. Norm, you're like, oh, my God, I never thought about it like that. And then, you know, Stan Hope is great, too. There's so many. Geraldo is great. Sure. There's so many fun. Stephen Wright is amazing. Quinn. Quinn, I love. Gotta get the Quinn. Yeah, Kill Him Softly is something special. So yeah, Cat Williams is funny. Yeah, you could you could do this all. We got we got a good batch here. Americans are very funny. Yeah, we're very good. The Brits. Yikes. Yeah. I'll tell you, I saw this guy, Russell Howard, the other day. Oh, very yeah. funny. I didn't see him, but I saw him on the lineup. Funny guy. Killer stuff. Wow. All right. And cute as a button. Put him on your rushmore. 
<laughs> um, no, thank you. Who is the best gay comic of all time? Uh, let's see. Hmm, Sam Morrill. Um, no, I don't know. That's tough. Maybe it's Ellen. Oh yeah, might have to be Ellen. Ellen's funny. Kathleen Madigan is she a les? No, I don't think so. Oh boy, might want to edit that one. She's a killer. Uh, um, all right, I feel like this is too comedy centric. I know, but every time we say that, they all email and go, "Oh my god, right, we right, loved it. Right. That was fascinating. Oh, my father's tits are swollen." Sure. Well, hey, one of my Mount Rushmore guys had a little run in with you. Let's hear about that. Well, last night, this is very exciting, but this feels so inside and no, gay. No, this is Cheapo big. Depot. This is lunch, and it feels like whatever. But so I go to the VU last night. I had one of these. I had four spots last night, and which is tricky because they're all right on top of each other. Sure. I got eight forty-five at the Village Underground, which oh, is in the that's Village. A of primo. Course. It's a nice spot, but they they tell you eight forty-five, but it's actually eight fifty, and yep. they're usually behind. Uh, then I have a nine thirty at the stand. Okay. Which is a little tricky because if it's running on time nine oh five, then you got to get to the stand, which is a little tricky. It's about fourteen blocks or so, or I guess it's. 12 blocks, but then three over. It's a tight squeeze. I usually do the lift, which gets you down to like nine minutes, which is pretty good. Yep, yep. So I got those. So that's on my mind. And you know me. I'm just stressed. I'm like, shit, I hate having a spot on top of a spot. Then at the stand, I got 930. Down, I'm closing the downstairs show and then opening the second downstairs show. Got so it. 930, 1015. Then I'm on a produced show upstairs. Pierce Mortensen, nice guy, handsome fellow. Great guy, good egg. Sexy accent. So he's got me, and I go, well, I, I, it's a little tricky because I get off stage at 9.45, seemingly, if it's not behind, which it was, downstairs, and then I got to be back on stage at 10.15. So I have a little window. Yeah. So I kind of have to get off stage there and come up and go on your show, whatever's happening. Sure. So it's all a lot of stress. And I shot a short film yesterday. What? Yeah, with uh, Katie Hannigan and Mike Vecchione. Wonderful Good eggs. actors. They really memorized this thing. Yeah. It's very exciting. Keep what? an eye out for that. Is your, your short is out, the NYU one? Is that on YouTube? I don't think it's out yet. It's well, we supposed get, to be out. Get a hold of that. The, the gays are clamoring. Yeah, I'll get it to you. Mariano Dongo Ooh, from Peru. Dongo. Isn't that fun to say? Dongo down on me. I wish I, if I could be anything, any other uh, ethnicity besides white, I'd go Latino. Really? A South American, Latino. You get a little flavor, mm-hmm. and you're not super dark. And women are just into you. Women are like, ooh. They yes. have this, you say South American guy to a woman, she goes, she perks. Brazilian, whoa. Mm. They, they, they ooze sexuality. And, oh. and Brazilian people have the best complexion. It's almost this mocha, caramelly th- skin tone. It just perfect yes well they have the skin tone we're trying to get when we go to the beach right say. yes exactly you got the uh, the pale irish mick who's horrific you can see the veins going through his cheek and he's all blotchy and then you go all the way to nigeria and you got uh my my soul is is black as night mm-hmm. and then the <laughs> brazilian right in the middle yeah nice very very nice thing and just the flavor the that sounded more like Caribbean, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, Caribbean. But anyways, Mariano Dongo, fun to say, brilliant young filmmaker. We talk movies sometimes. It's very exciting. Mm-hmm. It's coming out somewhere. I don't know what the hell goes on there. But shot a little thing. It's going to be out at some point. I don't know. It probably sucks. I suck. All right. But so I did that all day. And you know when you do something all day, then you don't want to do anything sure, else? Sure, like, sure. What am I, an asshole? My farmer working two jobs here? I know. Farmers have two jobs? I don't know. I made that up. Well, they got a lot of little jobs on the farm. Mm. <laughs> you know, they got to till, they got to soil, they got to mow, plow. Who's a tiller of the hun? What's going on there? I don't know what, what did that she is. Do? She killed someone? She is that a lady? Someone? Attila the Hun. Maybe it's a guy. I assume guy, just because uh, he's bad. You know, Attila the Hun, it's like, that guy's more evil than Attila the Hun. Like, I don't even know who that is. I think Hun sounds like, girl. hey, Hun, can you come over oh, here and hun. rape me? It's like a diner waitress. <laughs> hey, Hun. Plus, Att- Attila sounds ladylike to me, doesn't it? Attila. It's got the A with the feminine, but I don't know. I picture like a scary guy, and then I picture Jabba the Hut. I guess the Hun and the Hut for some reason. Ah, uh, what, what do you got on Hun? He's ah. a man, huh? and he's stuck, right? Bad guy, mean. raped, pillaged. We gotta get a microphone on Shelby. You know, he talks sure. a little less than the other guy. No camera though. Uh, <laughs> we like a chirp. I love a chirp or a beep beep beep. 
tweet every now and then. Sure. Uh, but until the hunt was bad, I think uh, the other guy was bad. Uh, Mongol. Mongolia. Uh, Mongol number five. No, <laughs> Dondo. What's that guy's name? The uh, Mariano Dongo. He was a he great was, guy. G- Genghis Khan. Oh, Khan. Khan. Well, isn't that the stat that like 40% of Americans are related to Khan because he, he rapes so everybody. many people? Yeah, yeah, he was good. He was on Tinder. He was cleaning up. I think it's like 58% of New Yorkers are his son or something. I don't know sure. what the stat is. I read it on a popsicle stick once. But, yeah, he's um, a Khan artist. Then there's Alexander the Great, who was oh. he was gay oh. and vicious. He would like oh, really? he'd kill you and then fuck your ass, I guess. Why don't the gays prop him up more? Wow, well, he's a famous he was, gay in history. I think he was a hun. I mean, he wasn't a good guy. Oh, he was great. <laughs> That's true. Uh huh. I have a point. There's a couple Stalin, Mussolini. I hear they're all bad. Uh, Mao. Everybody hates Mao. I did. Uh, oh yeah, Mao stinks. Oh yeah. It's Mao or never. <laughs> all right. Uh, Maui, Kazawi, no, K- Kamau, uh, the hungover, Kamau Bell. Kamau Bell. <laughs> There it is. Cosby, he, he's on the list now. You got Hitler, Cosby. Who did people talk about before Hitler? They always which, compare people to Hitler. Oh, that list. I wasn't sure which list. They meant Schindler's. No, 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 no. Cosby wouldn't make that list. No, I'll tell you that right now. No, no, no. Yikes. They'd have him fucking burning in the fire with his pudding pops. You got that right. Um, it's a Kodak moment. Any Jews, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, the Chris Rock. So yes. I get to the VU, and uh, I'm nervous because the time, and then if you're off, you're, especially when you're going last on a show, you're just like, sorry, the show, you have to end the show. I'm not going to be there if, you, if you're late. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So but you didn't miss it. Well, let me get All to right, the whole sorry, thing. Sorry, I'm jumping. So I get to the I'm Village autistic. Underground, and <clears throat> I see my old pal Greg Stone there. He's Love great, the Stone. Great to see the Stone Zone, one of the funniest guys ever. So I see him, we chat, we bullshit, we laugh. Emmy Blotnick is on stage. I love the blot. Love the blot. And we talked about this. You're, you're gonna, I think you're going to appreciate this, that there's that spiritual thing. When you hear somebody say something, a comedian say a thing that you've thought about uh, but never thought about making it a bit. It's just a the thing heart. you've seen. Yes. And she did a thing about these rich bros. They always have a big watch that has like multiple times on it. Yes. She's like, what are those other times? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, yeah, what is that? What is that? You see the watch. And it's not time. It's like other. It's, it's like three the little ones. Depth and whatever. Yeah. Thing, the moon. IP address or the pH balance. Who knows? I have no idea. I think that's what a hun does. Ah. Uh-huh. But I'm hungry. She said that, and she said it funnier than I did. But I was like, that that feeling you can't describe it of like, oh yeah, what are those? Totally, I get. That. I, I feel that way with Larry David when you watch the the show and you're like, oh, I've thought that, and I never put it to paper or thought to make it funny. But that's why it, it, you know, it's like you said you watched Gullman when you were younger. You're like, this is for me. Yes, exactly. Same shit. I'm like, how did he know that was gonna be hilarious to me? I know it's pretty great, and to everybody else in the room, obviously. But you know what I mean? You, it's so personal. You're like, yes. Maybe that's why the lady, these ladies out there like comedians because they're like. I felt that. That was big. Uh, We're connecting. Well, the best example of it is a joke we talk about all the time. One of my favorite bits ever is the Seinfeld bit about it seems like in the future we all just decide on an outfit. Uh, From now on, it's going to be the silver suit with the V and the boots. Yep. Which is hysterical. I told Derek that joke the other day. He was like dying for like 10 minutes. That's from like 82 or whatever. And what's amazing is no one can really point to... What he's talking about? What the show? I guess maybe Lost in Space, but you, we've all seen but it. But you still get it. Yes, yes. It's like I used to have a joke about uh, putting the knife in the Coke bag when the cops in the '80s in those movies. They go, "It's pure." Yes. And I don't know what movie I saw that in. I don't know where that trope came from, but everybody got it. Everybody does it. It happens in Goodfellas. Oh, is that right? The guy, yeah, he puts it on his tongue. It's pure. The old guy with the white. He goes. And oh, says, that's See right. you in Attica, that's dickhead. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, what's that Attica duck? Yikes. Good? Great. Oh, I'll watch that. Yeah, it's fantastic. Attica the Hun. Yeah, it was something else. And Frank. She was in the Attica. Oh, it was so bad you can't you can taste it. Mm-hmm. Ah, that was a fun one. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesday Sixty Stories is brought to you by Lucy. Look, I'm no Desi Arnaz, but I don't mind I don't mind saying I love Lucy. <laughs> Lucy. Oh, yeah. Lucy is a modern oral nicotine company that makes nicotine gum, lozenges, and pouches for adults who are looking for the best, most responsible way to consume their nicotine. We're all adults here, and some of us choose to use nicotine to relax, focus, or just unwind after a long day. So when you feel a craving, call up Lucy. I got the gum. The gum tastes great. Gives you a nice little kick. I'm not an addict. 
but I need it every now and then. I'm hungover now, and it just shoots me right up to the moon. Tastes good. The flavors are good. You got to get on it. Check out Lucy. Quit smoking. Stop putting those carcinogens and tar and queefs in your system. If you've been looking for an alternative to smoking, why not switch to the nicotine gum product that you can feel good about? If you enjoy using nicotine, you should definitely check out Lucy's product at lucy.co. That's lucy.co, and use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Remember, if you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co, and be sure to use that promo code TUESDAYS. Hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Join the action on the court during the biggest college basketball tournament of the year with DraftKings Sportsbook. Turn your team's victory into your win. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. If they win, you win. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still join the College Hoops action with Sports Kings Pools. Everyone can play free pools all March long for a shot at a share of over $250,000 in prizes. That's a quarter of a million dollars to you and me. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TUESDAYS. Bet $5 on any college hoops team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. If they win, you win with promo code TUESDAYS this week at DraftKings Sportsbook. 21 and over restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships take work. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone what we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well, but how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? We've got to invest in ourselves too. For me, working out and buying some new sneakers is an investment in myself. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy. By the way, people do not care for these sneakers. No, ah, they're this, fun. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. Wherever you go, there you are. That's what I always say. I love therapy. As you know, we reference Alan. We talk about Alan in this very episode. I couldn't stop laughing. He has changed my life for the better you got to get yourself a therapist. It's very important. By the way, my friend's uh, sister, he, she, she is a woman. She goes on to BetterHelp. She uses BetterHelp. She swears by it, and uh, she tells all her friends to get on BetterHelp. So try it out. It's a great way to feel better. you got to take care of yourself. Your mind is all you got. Whether it's hitting the gym, making time for your haircut, or even trying therapy, you are the greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with the therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Tuesdays with Stories is sponsored by BetterHelp, and listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. And now, back to the show. Um, so, any tits, I show up, I see Greg Stone, Cypher Sounds is hosting. He's still on stage, and it's that... Thing. You know, you, 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 I hope this isn't too inside, but you know, you got to get out on time. Yeah. And then you get down there at like 8 25, you're like, the host is still on. I know. What? I know. And then you want to just throw the light on, like, get him off. Story of my life. So he goes on. So the lineup, it's uh, it's Emmy, who's hilarious, great comic. Sure. Then Stone, hilarious, great lineup, which are few and far between these days. I know, and great hang by the, so far. Yes, great hang, great lineup. He goes on. Stone got a spit take out of Emmy, which is like, you just get so jealous. Wow. She was like, Poof, like a oh. Saved by the Bell, like went all over my face. A spit take is uh, is appropriate squirting. You know, Ooh. it's like public squirting. When you get a girl to do a spit take, you're like, that's a squirt in... Public. And it's more real than an actual squirt. Uh, They're pissing. I don't know about that. They piss. I've gotten a real rooster tail going before. Well, I've got this like a fountain in Italy. The fountain head. I get, I get moisture, but spraying, I think it's piss. I don't know, because I know piss. You're talking about bed wetter. I've been soaked in my own urine like R. Kelly. <laughs> and I'd, uh, I, I tell you, I've, I've eaten out a girl, and she, and I, 
You're telling me you know piss more than me. I know Nobody piss. pisses no more than me. I'm all You may piss. do it in the bed, but I think you'll you'll give it I'm to me. I'm piss and vinegar. I'm 10 to 1 pisses to your piss. I've drank piss. All right, you win accident. the piss. All right. Uh, but she accident. hit me in the face. I did a little, it's pure, with the urine. Or with the squirt. Oh, uh, the squirt. The squirt hit me. You and drank it, it, it tasted like urine. No, no urine. Everybody says it tastes nasty. Because I remember, as you know, my biggest fantasy is a reverse bukkake. Sure, we all know that. But it ain't a fresca. I'm not saying it's refreshing. I'm just saying it wasn't whiz. But nobody pisses more than me. I got a problem. By the way, squirt is a drink. I just realized that. Mm, Squirt box. Remember squirt? The can? Kind of. I think you're thinking of Surge. Give it a gook, Shelbo. I think there's a squirt out there. It might be discontinued because of the uh, sexual move, but that was a thing when I was banging. I kind of remember squirt. Squirt with lime. Yes. Ah. Isn't Ah. it a squirt of lime? No. I thought it was like 7-Up with a squirt of lime. Squirt of lime? No, (laughs) no. You're thinking of a squeeze. (laughs) Ah, squeeze. I confuse squeeze and squirt. You got the SQW, or U, SQU. Squeeze and squirt. That's a good doll. Yeah. You get a little baby, you squeeze it, and it squirts everywhere. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) For reverse bukkakis. I could get a bunch of babies. Baby bukkaki. I love it. I could just be tapping them and having them spray everywhere. There's Betsy Wetsy. Why not Susie Squirty? Market it. What's Mattel? up with Betty White? Was she that great? Why are we all obsessed with Betty Everybody White? Loves what was Betty the Betty White, White thing? Who gives well, a she, shit? You grew up with her. She's 89,000 years old. You saw her on all... She had brunette hair, and then she had white hair. And she was she was the old lady on SNL going, put it in my ass. And everybody goes, she's old. This is hilarious. <laughs> I get it, but it's like, who gives a shit? Whoa, Betty White. Everybody, she died, and everyone's like, oh, Betty White. I'm like, who cares? She was that. on Golden Girls 48 years ago. I hate what it. What have you done for me lately? I know. I think it's just a way, like, let me say something. I love Betty White. She died. Now I can talk. I don't know. You make it about you. This is what I get upset about. People are like, ageism. The ageism's crazy. Like, RBG has socks and ties and a podcast. Betty White, there's like posters of her. They're dropping confetti into Times Square sure. with Betty White's face when she died. I'm like, I think ageism's out. We like age. Age is good. Well, yeah, I don't. I don't get any of that shit. I know this is thirty years old, but the Bernie Sanders with the mittens. I'm like, all right. I, I don't know. Is this the funniest thing you've ever seen? Uh, I got it. It's not that. It's not hilarious. Yeah, it's just Betty. Okay, Betty White. Sure, whatever. Yeah. Fine. Okay. I'm know. an Estelle Getty man myself. Stop Ooh, or my mom will shoot. Yes. Remember that one? Was she a Golden Girl as well? Oh yeah. Yeah, she was the old one. She was the old one, but I think she was the young one. Ah. She was the, he played the old one, but I believe she was the youngest one. Is that right? That's one of those Snapple facts you hear. What? Yeah. Yeah, I think they were all like 41. Too, I know. If you look back. My life's like twice as old as the Golden Girls. <laughs> Squirt. <laughs> so let me just get right through oh, the story. Oh, yeah, please, please. <laughs> I'll just breeze right through this one. So I get there. It's Stone, Blown, uh, Emmy goes up. Then Stone, and then Quinn is next. It's Quinn. Oh, after Stone. After Stone is Quinn, then me. Boy, you're getting buried here. So that's that's the lineup. I'm all except, but I'm like, if everyone does their exact time, but then you're like, maybe Colin will go long. He's a legend. You can't be upset about that. But he's a studious, courteous man. And really, you want to switch to give yourself the of freedom course, to take the train. But I'm like, you can't ask Colin Quinn to switch. That's not how no, it works. Oh, no, no, no. Even though we're quite close. So he comes in, you know, he's, I love Colin. We hug, we catch up, I blow him. Sure. We're sitting there watching Stone, chatting. And then who shows up? Oh, Rushmore himself. He's bigger, he's blacker, he's bringing the pain. Woo! Never scared. Maybe you heard of him. Chris Rock. Oh, one of my heroes, one of my faves, big fan. So he shows up. You know, when I started doing comedy, every Wednesday, I did the Chops Lounge open mic. I would watch Bring the Pain before heading into the yes, city. Yes, I could do it heart by heart. Heart by heart? No, nah, that's not right. By heart, word for word. Ah. There we are. Well done. Wordle. So he comes in, and you're excited to see Chris Rock. That's exciting, but not when you have another spot. You're getting bump fatty. And so the managers, they swarm over there because the seller, they know how to treat a, a comic. Oh, they, they like, love it. Like they came like, whoosh, like repelling in. Yeah, yeah. They're like, when do you want to go on, Chris? Can we move your car? Can we blow you? Can we get you some wings? Battle stations. So he, says, in the house. he goes, I'll go after my old friend, CQ. Ah! And they go, ah. Oh, and I go, well, I'm fucked. That's it. I guess I got to leave. So now I have this thing in my head where I'm like, I got to tell the managers of the seller who can be quite ball busty. Sure. I got to go listen. You got rock. I got a bail on my set because I got three other sets. Yep. So I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm like, I got to go do that. So I get up out of my chair and I hear, oh, shit. 
Joe List is here. Wow. Hey, Name goes, drop. This sounds this sounds like I'm making this up. It was the highlight of my career. This is like a make-a-wish. He goes, Joe List is here. Wow, I watched this movie. This guy's got a good movie. Colin, you got to see the movie. Oh, he loved the movie. He goes, I don't want to bump Joe List. I'll go after Joe List. He said my name three times. Wow. I, I almost squirted. Wow. He, and he didn't want to bump me. It was like the Chappelle Attell story. Oh, yes. You know the Chappelle Attell? I love that story. It was like, uh, you know, Chappelle didn't want to bump Attell. He goes, I'll go after Attell. I can't bump Dave Attell. Oh, yes. I'm not saying I'm Dave Attell. It's pure respect. But he goes, oh, I don't want to bump Joe List. I'll go after Joe List. Wow. Well, you got a zippy name, too. It's a fun name. Fun. One syllable, double time. Fun to say. I don't think we can say zip anymore. Nope. Uh, so Sorry, <laughs> slope. <laughs> the manager comes over, Liz, our friend, and she sure. goes, so you, where are you going after Colin? He goes, no, I'll go after Joe List, which was fun because, you know, Liz is a ball buster. Oh, go, she's a tough gun. I go, hey, how, about, how do you like that? And I said, it'll be the big three. Ah, that's a classic. Good, good classic. By the way, Phil Hanley, I've talked about it before. The best, best going after a celebrity line ever. Because you always was, need something. You got to have a line. He went up to Ray Romano, then Kevin Hart, and then Phil Hanley went up and goes, wow, three in a row. <laughs> Killed. Brilliant. Great comic. I think he still has COVID, by the way. I think he's dead. Nah, we chatted. He's all right. Oh, you saw him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He finally got a cardigan on again. But I will say this. Please. Enough with the, the big time and legend. We get it. Enough with the uh, get ready to have your expectations lowered. Uh, I'm yes. so sick of that line. Everybody uses it. I get it. You know, you're going to mm. work on stuff, so you want them down here, and you're you're a famous guy. But come on. Get a new one, at least. You're, you're a writer. You're a creative person. Can we get a new one? You're a writer. You'll think of something. There you go. Seinfeld reference. He's back, that guy. I know. I love him. He's in, on Instagram as well. Tuesdays with facts or whatever. No. <laughs> What's his face? Oh, that was fun, the Tuesdays. I love facts. the fun facts. Do our fans die or leave us? What happens? I think they get jobs and married. <laughs> Who knows? They move on. They move out of the house. They're men with jobs, Jerry. So uh, <laughs> they bring us water. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So so anyways, he goes, I'll go after Joe List. So I'm like, he saved my ass. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. Right. So then Quinn goes up. So then I'm sitting with Rock watching, uh, it's me, Stone, and Rock. We're watching Quinn. We're dying. We keep wow. doubling over that feeling because Quinn is just the greatest. And they're old friends. We're old friends. I mean, if you're calling him old, it's like the language thing. Are you, been friends are you for 40 in the hallway? Years. Are you in the bench? What we're, you? In the, we're in the, the comic seating area. Oh, This wow. is at the VU. Oh, the VU. Yes. Got it. Got it. I was picturing the olive. So we're in the, the corner there. And we're doing this. Oh, they were elbowing each other and wow. they go, oh my god this wow. guy is the greatest what a moment and then because rock's going on they're shooting a that mint comedy series sure sure so they have like a time limit because that's a stream show so they have everyone go short and colin quinn ever the professional they give him the light <laughs> he's right out what a pro which helped me so then i go on i do my i did eight minutes because they were keeping it tight which yeah. is fun because you got chris rock watch and you go great i'll just do you know kill it the bangers yes i do eight he goes up then I'm in the back talking to Stone, saying all these same things. You're like, isn't it exciting? We know these guys. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Chatting with him, chatting, chatting, chatting. Then I hear from the stage, yeah, Joe List, that Joe List bit. And I go, oh, shit, hold on. What? He's saying my name. What, wow, what is this? Wow, come turned on. To, I turn to Cypher, and I go, what did he say? And he goes, oh, he's talking about your bit. He's been riffing on your bit for like four minutes. Which is good and bad. And then Chris Rock goes, wow, I just, I just riffed like four minutes off Joe List bit. Oh, and man. And so now I'm like, what's that? Yeah, yeah, you're doing my stuff? <laughs> I'm kind of like, wait, what? Well, it's not that he's doing my stuff, but he took, he's riffing on my premise. But right. I'm like, if it's great, he's going to want to keep that. I know, I know. Now I'm going to have the same premise as Chris Rock. And you can't win against The Rock. He's the legend. No. You're, not, the, you're the dweeb. I can't even add. What am I going to do? Hey, listen up there, right. Rocky. Exactly. I'm Apollo Creed, you know? You're, <laughs> he's the victor. You're the loser. To the victor go the spoils. Hey, to the victor goes the spoils. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting too deep with the refs. So anyways, so it, it made me like, that's so exciting. Chris Rock's mentioning my name. He didn't want to bump me. He knows who I am. This is so exciting. But I'm also like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. Plus, mine is just like a couple lines. It ain't no three-minute no. Chris Rock bit. He's got a chunk now. I might have to drop it or that, by the way there's no end to the story i don't know what's going on well we'll call in if you know rock or if you are rock but here's my thing if he takes the bit you got to get some compensation whether it's financial or he puts you in his next dumb movie or he puts you in the next whatever you're open for the on the road maybe yeah i mean sounds like he likes you i wouldn't be surprised if you're out there on the theaters yeah maybe i'll get some leather pants Ooh, women can't go down in lifestyle the big piece of chicken robitussin 
That'll uh, be fun. Shake it up. More Tussin. But yeah. anyways, that was a thrill. Then I shot over to the stand, made my set in time. You were there. You got that right. Boy, what a great, you're like a mirage to see you over there. Uh, what does that mean? You know, like when you see him, you're in the desert, you're really thirsty. Well, I guess ah, you're not a mirage. But oh. yeah, the excitement of the mirage, but you're not a mirage. Sure, sure. All you, know, right. you go, oh my God, water, and you run to dive in it, but then you're, uh, you know. I'm an oasis. Is that the same thing? No, an, an oasis, oasis is the real, is real. thing. Yeah, yes. exactly. You're an oasis. Yes. Good band. Great band. Oh, you like them? Oh, my God. Me Loved too. Oasis. Yeah, hashtag. You're, you're a wild card. I can never tell what you love and hate. Sometimes you're like, oh, they're the best. And you're like, uh, P.U. And I'm like, yeah, I never know where you're going to go. Oh, a big Oasis guy. Oh, yeah. Well, about now, by the way, uh, Noel is like making music with like sound machines. So I yeah. hope he does. That shit, I can't, I can't abide by that. That's stinky. You put it on, it's like... Poof, Oh, what are you get a Casio? I'm British. Get, you're like, oh. Pick up a guitar, Noel. Yeah, you stink. Yeah, you. All right. Anyway, name is Noel, by the way. Grassy that, Noel. Oh, yeah. But now let me run this Seven one. Seven <laughs> Ah, Noel Gay. All right, so. Was he a Shia Hun? Oh. Anola. Is that Gay? a man or a woman? No, that's the name of the plane that went down. I know that, but they must have named it after somebody. Ah, uh, yeah. No, well, it didn't go down. It dropped the uh, bomb, didn't it? Oh, uh, maybe you're right. Wait, that's Memphis Bell. All no, right. Memphis Bell delivered I it. I thought it was Lindbergh's plane. Maybe that was Lindbergh's. He's I thought that Jewish. was the spirit of St. Louis. Oh, uh, yeah. Anola Gay. Wasn't the Nola Gay dropped the uh, man, bomb? I think you're right. I think it was a bomb. Yeah. Much like my act. But yeah. I was going to say something. Sorry. <laughs> um... So let me run this one by you there, Please. Sloppy Jalopy. Yeah, shove it up my ass, see if I can. The Chris Rock thing is awesome. He knows your name. That's badass. I think he knows my name, but I bombed in front of him once, and he never looked at me the same. Mm. But I digress. Oh, boy. Doing a shoot or doing a gig in Columbus last week. Mm-hmm. Well, I hired a big film crew. You got to have a film crew now. You got to have 30 guys with a jib and a boom mic and all this shit, craft service. I know. It's a it. it's a lot of money. It's, it's so a lot much of, money. I know it kills your whole profit margin. And then they're in the green room, by the way, the whole weekend and all I that. Know. But whatever. Tell me about it. It's I hired them. So this guy, these guys are pros. They come in with the you know those big plastic cases. Oh yeah. Click click. You like snap those things open. It's got the vel- the styrofoam in there with oh, the yeah. with the cutouts. Yeah, it's like an assassin case. Yes, exactly. They got tripods. They got gear. Like all these gels. These guys are pros. Now they mic me up. Oh, boy. Now, this is when it gets to, uh, turns into the the jinx. Yeah, you're Durst. I'm Durst. Best Fred. show ever. So I'm like, you know, hanging out, whatever, and uh, this guy, one of the film guys, he's like a cool dude. You know, he's a vegan. He's sexy. His girlfriend shows up. He's like, do you mind if my girlfriend comes to the show? I was like, yeah, go nuts. I'll put her on the list. She shows up. She's gorgeous. Ooh. Very attractive lady. Ooh. And he's a cool guy, so I wasn't surprised, but you're still like, geez, she's a she's a stunner. Like, you, you were taken aback. Uh-huh. And uh, so, you know, I'm taking a whiz. I walk out of the bathroom. I'm chit-chatting, and there's a couple comics in there. They're, the film guys are setting up, and I go, man, that guy's lady is uh, oh, boy. quite the piece. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, woo, what a caboose on her. Holy Ooh. hell. And <laughs> the mic is on. Hot uh, mic. The hot, hot mic. mic. It's brutal. Those mics are brutal. Brutal. So now they're editing my shit. I'm just waiting for the uh, ah. for the text. Like, oh, you, you're going to talk about my lady like that? And I was like, ah, it was just a bunch of dudes in there. I didn't say anything mean, but... Uh, Locker talk. Yeah, I guess so. I didn't grab any pussy, but either way, I'm, I'm just dreading that because he's going to watch the footage and just go through it all, and it's going to hit him. That's a horrible feeling. I've had the exact same thing. Not about the... But, like, just whatever you say. I'm like... Paul uh, Paul Cicero in Goodfellas. You don't want people hearing what you're saying. Of course, of course. It's in the it's in the room for a reason. Even though we record almost everything we say ever, but that's true. Yeah, no, it's terrible. At least you said she's a trick. You didn't say like I'd like to eat her asshole. No, or why, no. why is he with her or whatever? Vice versa. Maybe a little of that. Uh, Maybe a little <laughs> squirting. Yeah, it's yeah. not piss. No, it's tough. Well, I, I, I talked about this. I thought maybe, but maybe not on air. What I learned from making this uh, feature film that'll be. People keep being like, you don't even say the name of the movie. You got to plug the movie. I can't find it. I'm like, it's not out yet. It's not out, you queefs. When it's out, I'll for sure say the name. Of the- I'm not completely autistic. Right, right. Just it's on like, the spectrum. Yeah, it's like, no, I'll tell it. By the way, the name of the movie is 4th of July, and oh. it'll be out in July. But people are like, you don't even plug it properly. I can't find the thing. I'm like, what am I, a fucking ah, idiot? Yeah. yeah, people get angry. How about going, 
Oh, well, what's up with the name of the movie? They never do that. They go, you fucking idiot. Yes. You don't say the name. You're like, why are we going right to 11? Yes. These go to 11. Yes. That's a hell of a picture. <laughs> but, 11. So uh, that was a bad picture. Oh, some great photos, 9-11. Oh, yeah, that was bad. Some beauties. First responder. No Jews in the building. That can't be true. Ah, it's, a, it's an old theory. Conspiracy. No kidding. Yeah, you never heard that one? No, I never oh, heard that. that. I think we have big. different YouTube algorithms. And I've been meaning to talk to you about it. Yeah. Uh, but, um, <laughs> what the hell was I saying? Uh, Chris Rock blew you? What was it again? No, nah, it wasn't uh, Rock. Oh, the sound. When I made this this film. Yes, the film. By the way, people keep doing that, too. They're like, he's so pretentious. He calls it a film. I'm like, it's a bit. It's a bit. It's all bits. Um, it's all pipes. I'm like, I'll like be like, yeah, well, you know, I'm making a film. We'll probably win an Oscar. People are like, you think you're going to win an Oscar, you piece of shit? I'm I like, know. no. I know. I was on stage the other day. I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I was late. I was rubbing one out to the Joe Rogan N-word tape. And people were like, oh, I'm like, I'm joking. <laughs> you think I would actually, oh, look at this tape. What a compilation. It's like, it's a joke. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. Yes. Uh, but anyways. A comedian. What I learned when I made my masterpiece over there in the film business. Sure, 4th of July. Um... The sound guys, they know everything that's going on because everybody's mic'd and you forget, especially because you're Ooh. shooting these long hours. Yeah, of course, you forget. And they know every, they know all the gossip. They know who's fingering who, who right. makes who. And so you're just getting all this info and you have to be mindful of it. I want to like put, you want to put a little like sticker on your hand or something that says you're mic'd. Good call. Especially if you're like, boy, the sound guy's a real piece of shit. This I guy's know. an asshole. They must have the best news, best inside info. They get the best shit, like that Christian Bale flip out, the Tom Cruise flip out. That's all the sound guy. Yeah, exactly. And the other, th- the other interesting thing about sound people I learned, they're a prickly bunch mm. because nobody thinks about the sound. When you make a movie, you just assume it's going to sound right. Ah. And it's half the movie is the sound. Sure, With no sound, sure. you have no movie. And nobody's like, uh, wow, my God, my favorite sound mixer is Bill. You know the DP. You know the editor. Yes, but you don't know the sound guy. That's a good point. And it's very important. important. Yeah. Yeah, good good call. Yeah, they they do have an Oscar for sound mixing, but that's when you you hit the TiVo or you go take a boom boom. Yeah, you don't, no one cares about that. Plus, you already know what movie's going to get it. It's the explosion movie. Mm. But they should give it to the the fucking quiet Quiet relationship talk movie. Exactly. A quiet place. Yeah, not really a relationship. He was married, I guess, in it. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, but yeah, how about this one? So we'll see what happens with the editing guy I'm, or the the sound guy. He's probably yeah. gonna kick my door in. He might be turned on. He might be like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, my wife's hot." I would be if somebody was talking about my lady. Like, man, she's so hot. I'd be like, "Hey, all right, that's nice." Yeah, exactly. And here's the thing: if you're mad, you're just pretending people don't talk like that. Ah, you're aware that men talk about women. Great point. And they could be saying she's a dog shit ugly fucking fat whore. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. People talk like that all the time. That's why, like, these viral videos are so annoying. Like, this guy said this. You're like, well, so have I. I just wasn't recorded. Right. Yeah. Real- reality has to set in for these people. But they, they, I think people just love getting someone in trouble. Ah, oh, we got this guy. You're mm-hmm. like, all right, well, you've done worse. I know, but I didn't get caught. All right, well, you still did it. Well, what I always say is these people get so upset about comedians on podcasts and stand up, like, can you imagine if they heard what we're talking about when we're not Woo-wee. mic'd up? Holy shit. Yeah. Well, a lot of bad things. Eh, you know, we're, 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 I don't want to say our rods and cones are fried, but our our, uh, our sensors are a little worn out. So we have to up it, I think, a little bit in darkness. We're autistic. Spectrum. Mobile. Spectrum Silver. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by ExpressVPN. If you're on Netflix in the U.S. and in a Scorsese mood, you can watch The Irishman easy peasy. But if you want to see Casino, you've got to smuggle yourself up to Canada. Watching Netflix without ExpressVPN is like playing for a gym membership, paying for a gym membership, but only being able to use the treadmill. Ooh, good analogy there, VP. ExpressVPN lets you change your online location so you can control where you want Netflix to think you are located. I like that. With almost 100 different server locations, you can gain access to thousands of new shows and movies. I used ExpressVPN to make Netflix think I was in Belgium to watch Goodfellas and then switch my country to the UK and watch Cape Fear. Wow. This guy's got good taste. All I had to do was open the app, select location, tap one button to connect, and refresh the page. It's the fastest VPN I've used, and it works on phones, laptops, smart TVs. Basically, you can stream from it 
ExpressVPN. If you could stream from it, ExpressVPN works on it. And when you're using ExpressVPN, all your data is encrypted for added security. So be smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services, only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. Don't forget to use our link at expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Jay, what a deal. (laughs) Hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by, you know it, you already know what I'm going to say, goddammit, Sheath Underwear. Oh, When you travel as often as we do, you want underwear that will travel with you. From the Laugh Factory to the Comedy Cellar, from sea to stinky sea, Sheath Underwear will keep you and your junk cozy and comfy, so no matter where the road takes you, you got some underwear. I wear Sheath Underwear every day. Mark wears it every day. Oh, yeah. We read an ad for it every day. Yep. We love Robert Patton, USA veteran he's been in two wars i believe or he's been in the war twice i can't remember all the details he's a hell of a guy spent some time with him down in uh skank fest i assume i'll see him in vegas by the way hadn't done laundry in skank fest was wearing the same pair of dirty underwear i forgot my underwear they hooked me right up i was on my way into a oh, show wow. they handed me a pair i went in the back and just put them on i meet too a couple of women while i was doing it hell yeah uh, magical dick pouch aside, this underwear is comfy, cool, and comes in so many different patterns. Robert pattern. You can have a pair of sheets ready for any occasion. I wore it to my wedding. I wore it to my mother's funeral. I wore it to uh, finger my father for a couple minutes. Sure. They don't even. They didn't leave out the ladies either. My wife has a sports bra. She's got the booty short underwear. She loves them. Get yourself some sheets for God's sake. Support this son of an onion. Yeah, here, here. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TUESGAYS to get 20% off your first order and sheath's 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESGAYS. Get sheath underwear and let them support your balls. Here, here. Back to the show. All right, so how about this one? This is just, I'm going to vent to you. Please vent it up. I need your input here. Just tell me I'm gay and fuck my ass and blow my dead. Wait, those are two different things, though. There's uh, vent and then there's input. Vet. Vent. Oh. The vent is no input. Oh. Well, you get input on vent. I don't think so. I think vent is just vent. Right? No. Shall we, can we get a ruling on this? I vent to you and you input. Okay. That's but, like, I don't know. Is there a word? Uh, vent, I thought, was just like, don't say anything. I'm just going to vent. Uh, I thought that's what vent means. I, I prefer you say something. Shelby's siding with me, which is interesting because he doesn't care for my vibe. But uh, <laughs> vent. All right. All right. Well, I, I'm welcoming a, a I want a response. Okay. So no podcast. vent. This is like a, uh, let's come up with a word for this. All right. A back and forth. A volley. A volley. Ball. That's very good. All right. So... I do a gig at Gotham, fundraiser, great show, sold out. Nothing like a sold out Gotham. It's a great oh, club. Great club. I had a hot set, and the the guy running it goes, here you go, Dickless, and he does the handshake, and he hands me a big wad. I'm talking a cum guzzling, big old cash is king. Here you go, like a drug deal wad. Was I on this show? I think so. I did a sold out wad of cash. I think fundraiser. you were there. Yeah, we missed each other like a mirage. I went first. Mitsubishi. I mm. think they make a mirage. Oh, is that right? Or maybe it's Hyundai. You don't hear much about Mitsubishi. No, they're all they make pianos too, which they don't get any love for. Really? Give it a go. You're thinking of Yamaha? Oh, Yamaha does piano it's, motorcycles. It's a different Asian. Yeah. I think I've seen a Mitsubishi piano. Maybe you're right though. <laughs> I've definitely seen a Mitsubishi right. air conditioning. No kidding. Yeah. I think the Japanese folk, I almost said Japs, I corrected. Good say. Japanese folks, they can make anything. Oh, yeah. They're, they're killers. Yeah. But they take our ideas and then make them better. So I'm like, well, how about you guys come up with something? I guess they got sushi. <laughs> the one I did, they got the uh, shove them on the train thing. Have you seen that in uh-huh. Tokyo? No. They got a big, long popsicle stick. And they use it to jam people oh, out of the subway. That. That's fun. It's quite a sight. They don't. They don't. They don't have feelings over there. They're just like okay. They're like lemmings. They just push them in. It's hilarious. 
over here to be like, I felt threatened. I, I got to go write a Yelp review and TripAdvisor. <laughs> and over there, they're just like sardines in a can, and they, they accept it. You know what I thought about Japan? Only flag that if you flip it upside down, it looks the same. Ah, you can't tell. It's a big, big period stain. That's right. All, All right. right. Let's get to the vent. So I'm venting here or volleying. And venting. Volley vent. And... Uh, I do the show you do. The guy hands me the big wad of cash, and I run out. And this is where the running out fucks you, you know, trying to make all these sets. I run out. I put the big wad in my left pocket. I should have put it in my wallet, but I put it in my left pocket. Oh, boy. At some point, I'm hauling ass down 23rd Street trying to get to the F train. I take the phone out, and I must have pulled all the Ah. shit out of my wallet or my Ah. pocket. And I heard somebody go, hey! But I got the earbuds in, and the earbuds... They suck away the sound. Mm-hmm. You, you got you, you know what I mean? Sound suck away. Sound suck. What is it? Canceling? Noise canceling. Cancel Which culture. Which we need in the walls here. Oh, yes. God. Do we need a cancel? Tell Shelby about the incident. No. The other day, the guy over here was like, oh, threatening yeah. his kid. It was yeah, quite, nuts. A, quite, yeah. quite a sight. It was like a WWF promo over there. <laughs> yeah, I think he was talking to a hitman. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Bret Hart. <laughs> heart to heart. So... <laughs> um, I guess I lost the wad. And, you know, you hear a guy yell, hey, in New York, you just keep going. No one turns around. What do I give a shit? Figured some hobo was throwing a, a turd at somebody. But I ran down, and then I go, oh, let me put that uh, cash in my pocket. I'm on the subway doing this shit. And isn't it, w- it wacky how when you lose something, you check that pocket 800 times? Yes. Like, Maybe it's still in my pocket. Maybe I didn't feel it. Yes. You know, the pocket's four inches long. Yep. So is my cock. Yes, I can prove. <laughs> so, um, Witness. So, yeah, just a bummer to loot. Just a couple hundred bucks just gone. But, look, some guy on the sidewalk found it and gave me a hey. I didn't respond, and uh, he got, I guess he, I, I gave back to the to the city. You gave back to the city. You know, uh, it just sucks. I don't know. There's it nothing. Uh, it's, this is a vent because I got nothing to add except you got other money, maybe someone right. else, like you said, that needed it, whatever. Somebody bought heroin, put in their dick hole with yep. it. But yeah, it's a horrible feeling. I did that the other day with the AirPods, lost the AirPods. What? And uh, yeah, at the gym. I thought at the gym, but oh. I was doing the pocket thing. But I was wearing sweats because I was going to the... This is the problem with the gym is now in Manhattan. So I got to take a train. So you're wearing these Lucy Goose uh. sweats, and I think it just fell out in the subway. So somewhere there's like a hobo with a nice set of AirPods and 200 in folding cash. What's I folding know. cash? Folding? Yeah. I've never heard that. Folding cash. Folding cash. Is that what he says? I've heard of walking around money. I've heard of loose change. I've heard of uh, dollar bills, Benjamins. I think folding cash is in, in uh, <laughs> Kill Bill Volume 2. He says, you bring down $1 million in folding cash. Folding cash. Is it folding or is it something else? Folded, maybe. But why are you folding? That's the wrong tense. Yeah, maybe he says holding cash or bolding cash. I don't, I don't know. You're on your own there, but it, Shelby, are you on this? I think you're venting. He's looking it up. Like money in the form of bills. Oh. Of bills. And it is folding, right? Oh, yeah, there you I've go. heard it other places. Maybe that's a saying. Folding cash. Okay. I'm sure there's an etymology of the term sure. or something. Well, maybe because a coin you can't fold, so that means it's bills. That's good. Buffalo. Cash, money you can fold. By the way, cash is king is out. I go to eight different stores. They're like, we don't take cash anymore. We're hip. We're cool. It's all card. You're like, I thought cash was king. Yeah, but I think cash is in reference to the whole grand thing. Because cash can mean several things. No, I, do, I think it's, they go, you, you take cash, you go, what are you kidding? Of course, cash is king. Cash is clay. Mm. Cash is clay. He's good. But I know cash is... You got to have cash. You know what I mean? Paper money. People still say bills, bills, paper money. Yeah. People still say like he's a cash cow. Uh huh. In reference to even if they've never had bills, because all these wealthy people they don't have any bills. They got no liquid. They call it yes, liquid. Squirting. Liquid IV. But then there's uh, he's got cachet, which right? Is cash with a little gay exclamation accent goo. We're gonna lose all that cachet. Right. So I lost my cachet, and uh, just a bummer because you go, if I hadn't done this, I'd still have it. You, you got to just accept it and move on, but it, I hate losing things when you didn't need to lose it. It's the worst, and um, that, that's when Tom Dustin and I went to Key West years ago. We, I had $1,000 stolen from me by ah. prostitutes. He had $500 stolen from him from prostitutes, which is 100% of our money, and for like 12 years, a slave, I kept... <laughs> 
adding $1,000 to my money. Like, I'd have $300 in the bank, and I'd go, God, it should be $1,300. Right. And it was, it was literally like 10 or 15 years that I finally stopped doing that. Yes, exactly. It sticks with you. It's a sad feeling. Then you imagine, what if I lost a kid? You know these people, oh they, they, their kid gets kidnapped. Like, I'm, I'm bitching about a couple hundo cash, and they're like, well, I lost Roger. <laughs> but ironically, the kid saves you a ton of cash That's by losing true. it. That's true. That's a lose, good point. You got to look on the bright side. If you lose a child to crib death or, or <laughs> you know. Sids. Yeah, Sids or uh, Vicious or whatever. Uh, coyotes. You save, a, you save a bundle on car insurance. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> you really do. 15%. <laughs> That's so true. You're saving a lot of money with that dead kid. No one ever looks at that. We should go around to kid funerals. This could be a service. And ah, just go, hey. Silver lining. Yeah. Did you see Playbook? That movie stinks, too. Playbook. Silver lining Playbook. I did. Oh. I thought it was cute. It was cute. I saw it the first time. I had just got sober. I was going through a breakup. My father's gay, and I was like, hey, this is all right. Yeah. And then you watch it a second time, and you're like, what the hell is this mess? Well, there's a lot of dancing, I remember. Oh, they got a black guy in there. He taught him how to have some rhythm, and it was Bradley Cooper. Well, you got to see uh, What's-Her-Face and some leggings. Jennifer Lawrence. That's the one. J-Law. Same initials. Uh-huh. Um Jay How Lano. about, though, the, the thing that lost me is the Indian psychiatrist has his face painted at the Eagles game. He's like, go birds. And I'm like, mm. come on. No. Right. This just, it just doesn't exist. Stop trying to sell to me that there's like an Indian doctor psychiatrist right. in his 60s who on Sunday afternoon paints his face green and goes like, oh, oh, <laughs> birds, baby. Right, like, right. No. With the accent. Can you picture Alan at a fucking no. Mets game with a foam finger and uh, no. a, you know, a, a propeller on his hat? <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, he's 79 years old. That would never happen. He would die out there. But you're right. It's true. They they try to pipe it. You know what annoys me, too, is these comedy movies or quote-unquote comedy movies. <laughs> He would die. He's old. He'd get hit with a with a beer can. He would pass out and and rot away. <laughs> but these movies, they have the Indian guy with the face paint, and you're laughing because he goes, "Go birds!" It's a joke. It's like a he's a punchline. It's a funny accent. But if you do an accent, you're a piece of shit. Like I'm just trying to be funny. Like that guy is funny. Right. That's There's how no we ill talk. will. Yeah. It's, yeah. No ill will. But. I don't know. That's just ridiculous. There's movies that it just takes me out of it. I'm like, all right. And then someone's always like, well, he could. How do you know? I'm like, okay, yes. There could uh, be a 63-year-old Indian psychologist sure. who's like super crazy into the Philadelphia Eagles to the point that he paints his face right. at the game. But I feel like a professional would be like, ah, I can't paint my face. What if I bump into a, sure, a, a client? client. Uh, whatever. Then there's that confidentiality. What's client that? To, LA confidentiality? No, client to, to oh, uh, yeah. patient and confidentiality. So they can't, you go, hey, I fucked my dad on Tuesday. They go, all right, well, that's just up here forever. Yeah, it's weird, too, especially with Alan, because we all know each Woo! other. It's all pipes. You got that right. So it's a little weird. I got to be like, well, you know, my wife, who you saw earlier. Right. She doesn't blow me or whatever. That's got to be so fun for him because he's basically like putting together a sitcom or a movie because he's got all the characters and every character is telling you secrets about the other characters and then he gets to see that character and go, I know about the anal bleeding, <laughs> you know? Well, you know what I think about? And I think this is a good analogy, actually. When you watch Planet Earth, yes. these documentarians, they can't, they're not allowed to interfere with nature. I hope not. And there's one like famous, well, I don't know what famous, I guess it just stuck in my head, but... It's like these elephants, and there's a baby elephant that gets lost from the herd, mm. and they just film it going oh, the wrong way. Interesting. And they're like, "Hey, we don't know, we can't," which is annoying to me because I'm like, "No, save the elephant, save the just elephant. turn them and be like, it's east, you fucking idiot." Yes, but they can't, so it's like this sad music, and the Indi the the elephant is leaving, right. and he's gonna die. They're like, "He surely will die because he's ah, stupid." but it's that's like, like a- it's like therapy. Because I'm like, ah. my wife doesn't love me. Oh, my God. She's going to leave me. And then he has her earlier, and she's like, I just love him so much. And I'm like, you could help me. You could help me. You could, like, you could be like, by the way, I saw her earlier. You're all wrong. That's a and great it just point. Me. Now, I wonder if you could go, hey, hey, Big Al, go ahead and save me. If you give him the permission, maybe that's okay now. No, but I think it's, it's breaching her breaching. confidentiality or whatever. Way, yeah, yeah. Anal breaching. Like, I'm over here going, I think Mark thinks I'm gay. And he's like, he does. And I'm right. like, oh, shit. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Shit. I try to prove that I'm not, but. Well, shouldn't have blown me. But I you bet. got a point there. He could save. Yeah, these these planet Earth, but it's like a time machine movie. You, you, you step on one twig, and now all of a sudden the dinosaurs are fucking Jews. Right. Good point. Mm-hmm. Is that how they all died? Yeah, that's it.
They got sued. <laughs> um, but any tits. I love that planet Earth, though. That's fun. But I, I think I would have to save the elephant. I would step in. Yeah, it's, I guess it's like against the code or whatever, but the poor elephant's dead. But nature... A bunch of lions probably ate the elephant. Well, they do that with the food chain as well. You know, like, uh, hey, if I'm eating a, a bacon sandwich, they go, geez, you're killing a pig, you piece of shit. They're, they're a living thing. But then if the wolf kills the pig, they go, well, it's the law of the land. What do you call it? The uh, It's uh, it's a thing, nurture. the circle of life or whatever. Oh, I hate that song. Yeah, yeah. Well, either way, they, they get to do it if they do it. Right. You know, it's like the N-word. Oh, boy. Well, I'm just saying, you can't say it, but uh, they could say it. Sure. You know, and the same with the animals. Oh, they boy. Can, the animals can say the N-word. Keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I get it. Hey! Right. That's yeah. their N-word. That's the horse N-word. <laughs> right, right. Um, I know about Mr. Ed and the peanut butter. Yeah, thank you. I can feel it coming. <laughs> it's a fun fact. I think Mr. Ed's out. People don't know that, that re- reference anymore. Oh, yeah, good point. Which is funny because it was on like 75 years before we were born, too. I know, but there was so little content back then, you had to replay old shit. Now, kids can't keep up with the old shit because they got 18 TikToks coming in their asshole. Yeah, you you couldn't find Mr. Ed if you had to. No. Ah, the TikTok. I hate the TikTok. It sounds like a made-up thing if you were telling some 18-year-old. I swear to God, there was a TV show, black and white, where a guy talked to a horse. And they go, well, what's the show? Like, that's it. That's the show. That's it. They gave him peanut butter. His mouth moved. It was high high class entertainment. Then there was a dolphin that saved oh, kids. Yeah. There was a dog that saved kids. Everyone was saving kids back then. That's true. They, they were all in a well. They lost a lot of money when those kids got saved. You got that right. <laughs> but, um, Good on the pocketbook. I think I told you about this before when uh, Dan Bulger and I, we were smoking weed one night, and I brought up three men and the baby. Three men and a, ba- a baby. And a baby. Yes. And he had never heard of it because he was a young whippersnapper, which is funny because... Bulger was always so young to me, but he's like five years younger than I am. Yeah. Now he's like 37 years old. Well, you were out of high school when he got in. Right. Mm. But anyways, I was telling him, he's like, I never heard of this movie. And I was like, oh my God, it's crazy. It's about three wealthy guys. They all share an apartment for some reason. And then someone leaves a baby. They thought it was Coke, but they keep the baby. Oh, yeah. And Colin Quinn is in it. And he's like, what? (laughs) <laughs> and oh there's a ghost and I'm like and there's a ghost he's like there's a ghost and Colin Quinn right. what, what the hell is this and he's like I gotta see this movie and you're like well it's a big piece of shit and by the way it's directed by Dr. Spock Leonard Neem Leonard Nimoy directed what? Three Men and a Baby I mean, isn't that a crazy that? description that is hilarious yeah, there's so many off the wall things there and uh, yet it's all true Ted Danson and uh, Gutenberg. Steve Gutenberg and the other guy and they all, Selleck they all live together yeah, why? Like if you, me, and Sam just got a place together. Yeah, and they're all loaded. One's an architect, one's a gay guy, and I think one's a superhero. I don't no. know. <laughs> One uh, does the chess, checks mix or something. Remember? Checks mix. <laughs> cereal? What do you mean? He does advertising. He's oh. got the puppet or the tiger who's like, buy cereal or whatever. That's right. And then Ted Dance is an actor. Okay. And uh, Burt Reynolds is like an architect or whatever. <laughs> I just get Burt Reynolds and Selleck mixed up. That's funny. Yeah, that. I think they're sexy mustache guys. That's my, what it is. My dad, too. Oh, I'd like to ride that stash into the wind. Where are you going to be this weekend? What do you got cooking? Uh, this week? I don't even know what day it is. Uh, I'm in Aruba right Woo! now. And uh, Amy Smart, what's her name? Amy Smart. What's the gal's name? Oh, Natalie Holloway. That's the one. Yes. Way different. Yep. Um, really killed tourism. What, uh, what was I going to say? Okay, so big gigs coming up. Uh, Boston, April 14, 15, 16. Laugh Boston. My life is on the line. I'm on the record. I'm, I'm committing suicide if I don't sell out half of these shows. There we go. Or Let's one and a half. Let's make right. one. You keep lowering it. Yeah. We're going to sell them all out, Fatty. Come on, uh, Be- Bean Town. Come out and see the hometown hero, Whitman Mass. Come on out, baby. Chocolate chip cookie was invented there. You can look it up. Um, that'll be that. The weekend after that, Buffalo Helium, nice. whatever that is, April something something something, May fifth through the seventh, Austin. I'm back at Cap City, which is uh, alive and well again. I can't wait to hear about it. And then Raleigh the weekend after that, the Good Nights. Uh, what else is coming? Up? I got Nashville coming up, San oh, Francisco coming up, Vancouver towns. coming up. Oh, oh Side Splitters is in March twenty oh, fourth through twenty sixth. I love it, and I'm back in Tacoma again, May thirtieth. Uh, what else? A bunch of crazy, this is a good run, crazy shit coming up. So I, I, I'm pumped. Full calendar. So this come on out. 
and subscribe to the YouTube. We're just weeks away from the new special. It's coming out. It's Ooh-wee. in the can. The movie's in the can. The special's in the can. You got that I got right. a short film in the can. I'll get Mariano Dongo to release his. Dongo. A lot of, I got all kinds of shit in the can. Yeah, you're working, Fatty. And you got content coming out. Cans. Cans. Ooh, all right, I'm at oh, La Jolla. Oh, Patreon. I just want to mention the Patreon. Oh, you got to get on the Patreon. We never it's mentioned crazy. the Patreon. And we have a live Tuesdays. Yes. On March 22nd. Is Sold it? Sold out. You can't come. Wow. You can't get in. You missed it. You blew it, Fatty. Tampa as well. I'm nipping at your heels. I'm at the Cincinnati Funny Bone, Louisville Comedy Club, Dania Beach Improv, whatever that is in Florida, Helium, Indianapolis, Carolina Theater in Raleigh, Stand Up Live in Phoenix, Calusa Casino Resort in California, Magoobies in Baltimore, Addison Improv in Tejas, uh, Moon Tower. San Jose Improv, Moon, Howe, Moon Tower, and uh, what is that, Austin, and then uh, Huntsville, Alabama. I'm going Ooh. back down to my old southern roots. Let me just give you a word of advice. Please. Don't mention Auburn or Alabama. Ooh. It turns into a goddamn zoo. All right. Good call. I didn't even say, who do you like? I was like, yeah, boy, Bama or Auburn. That's a great one. Crimson Tide, War uh, Eagle, fuck your mother. It was just a mess. Yeah, that, that Huntsville's kooky because they got uh, a bunch of rednecks, but then they got NASA. Yeah, some NASA there. It's, it's the budding heads of dumb and smart, so we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get a, a Indian guy with face paint. Go Eagles. <laughs> uh, this is fun. Boy, I think I, I think we learned a lot today. Great app, great app. Loved it. Love the pod. We love the gays. Get on the Patreon. The live app's going to go up there. We got all kinds of fun and games and all kinds of bonus shit. And uh, get a merch thing. Shelbo, yes. we got some Greg shirts and whatnot. We got killer merch. The link is in. We'll be on the YouTube, too. The link is on the uh, podcast thing. It's on the YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube. Those numbers are through the roof. We thank you for that. And the Patreon. We, I mean, we're doing one in studio a week. It's hilarious. At it's least. amazing. So get on that. Yeah, and thank you for the wallpaper, Shelbo. Looking good. <laughs> Thanks a lot, folks. We'll see you in hell. Queef it up. Praise Allah. <laughs>